All right, I want to take a few moments and look at something that we have in German called weak masculine nouns. Now, this isn't something that is frequent in German. This isn't something that I expect you at your level, at German, at the level of a, a beginning German uh, speaker, to have a full grasp on. In fact, there are certain nouns that, uh, that are weak masculine nouns that even I, after speaking 17 some odd years, uh, still, don't, still can't identify. However, it's something that I want you to be able to uh, be familiar with. So should you see it sometime in, in written text or hear it spoken, you'll know what's going on and won't be surprised and won't be confused. Uh, what I want to do in this presentation is sort of look at the concept of weak masculine nouns um, starting in Old English. Actually, English is a Germanic language and uh, also had weak masculine nouns. And then I'm going to follow this, uh, this path, this concept, over into German and see that even though in English we've lost this, we used to have it, we lost this, it's still residual to some degree in the German language today. So let's take a look at the Old English weak masculine noun. I'm going to look at Name, which is very similar to the Name uh, or name that we have uh, that we use in German today. Now you notice that in the nominative case, Name doesn't have an ending. However, if we move from the nominative case into an accusative environment, I have a name, for instance, the noun takes an N ending. Now, this is something we've seen in our discussions of, of definite articles, as I'll show you in just a second. You'll recall that German nouns are masculine, feminine, or neuter and that this gender is reflected in der, die, and das. Uh, we're going to be looking specifically at der nouns, since, we're talking, since we are talking about masculine weak nouns. Now, the definite article der in the nominative case is uninflected. It's simply der. However, as we move this noun, or this definite article from the nominative case into an accusative environment, you'll see that it picks up an N ending. Der goes to den. Now, this looks an awful lot like the change we just looked at with, in Old English, from Name, ending in an A, in the nominative case, to Naman, ending in an N in the accusative case. Now, this concept is, is important because what, what we have right here now with definite articles is we, definite articles in German today show this change from a nominative to an accusative environment. It used to be, as we saw looking at Old English, that nouns also were inflected to show this change from a nominative to an accusative environment. And I, I find this interesting because in, in a way this is sort of like doing uh, linguistic archaeology, going back in time and looking to see how languages develop and actually how languages are interconnected. So. Definite articles today in German show this shift from nominative to accusative, from der to den. There are some residual effects, some sort of, I almost think of them as linguistic appendices that are left over from nouns that also were inflected. And let's take a look at name again, der Name in the nominative case. Now notice that Name, again, as in Old English, in modern German, doesn't have an ending in the nominative case. However, as we move from the nominative case into the accusative case, we tack on N endings. 
Dea goes to Dane, as we're already familiar with, and Nama goes to Namen, also tacking on an N ending. So, let's take a look at this in a sentence. Das ist der Name. That is the name. We have der Name, nominative, because it's the subject of the sentence. The verb, third person singular, is a form of sein, a verb expressing being, condition. So there's no action in the sentence. Since there's no action, we're only talking about the subject. The subject will always be in the nominative case. Therefore, we have Nama, but it's der Nama. Der is the definite article reflecting this uh, nominative environment. However, if I introduce another actor into the sentence, Ich habe den Namen. Now I'm talking about me, ich. First person singular personal pronoun with a first person singular verb, verb habe. Um, I have. Well, what do I have? Something has to receive the action of being had. And this noun is going to be in the nominative case, uh, excuse me, is going to be in the accusative case. Therefore, der Name goes to den Namen. We have a shift from der definite article to den, but also we have a shift in a noun itself. The noun tacks on an ending n, indicating that also this noun moves from the nominative into accusative. Now keep in mind this isn't with every single noun. This is only with certain specific select nouns that are masculine. And there's no pattern for recognizing these. These are simply something that you have to memorize. Polizist, uh, president, uh, name. Uh, these are nouns that historically have tacked on an N or for some reason or another uh, Germans feel that they need to have an N in the accusative case. This isn't some, this, these aren't things that I, I expect you now to reproduce on your own, but I want you to uh, recognize these if you see them because uh, we'll find out later that other cases, like the dative case, also tack ends on. And so I want you to be able to distinguish between accusative and dative. But that's something uh, that we'll discuss further down the road.